Welcome, Real Gamers everywhere. This is Real Gamers Weekly number three for September 15th, 2024. I'm Fox, your vanguard of the Real Gamer Brigade, and this is your home for rational, reasonable, Real Gamers. Let's roll the intro. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's time for this week's gaming news. Grab yourself a coffee, tea, get your vape device ready, maybe even a butter croissant, and let's get going. And if I didn't hit on something you think I should have, maybe I'll get to it next week. Leave your suggestions below. A minority investor in Ubisoft, AJ Investments and Partners, released a scathing open letter accusing Ubisoft of gross negligence in handling its business, as well as demanding that the company go private and sell itself off, removing the Guillermo family from control. This comes amid Ubisoft's non-stop stock decline over the past four years, with a stark drop since the release of Star Wars Outlaws. In July of 2018, stocks were valued at $110.50 a share, but the current value is at incredibly low $13 making this the lowest the stock has been since 2013. Given the grim prospects for Ubisoft in the midst of constant controversy and abysmal sales, a radical change to the leadership structure of the once great gaming publisher is looking more and more likely every day. A demo for the upcoming game Perennial Order is available on Steam. Some have described the game as a plant-based horror souls-like boss rush. So if killing corrupted rogue Flora sounds like something you'd be interested in, or if you just like gardening in general, this is one you should definitely try out. I actually gave the demo a shot and it's pretty unique unique. Though it was hard at times to figure out where to go, the interesting mechanic is that you attack by pushing and holding on the right analog stick, and you have to hold it and release at just the right time to get the maximum damage. This added a whole different element to the combat that I actually haven't seen in any game of this style before. So it was really interesting. I beat all of the bosses in the demo, which is really, I think, three, and uh, had a lot of fun with it. So I wouldn't mind checking out the full version. The PlayStation 5 Pro was recently announced to the tune of 700 big ones. It not only features a bigger GPU, more ray tracing, and AI-based upscaling PSSR, but also leaves players high and dry without a disk drive or even a vertical stand. The little piece of plastic to stand your system upright will set you back 30 bucks and the disk drive 80. Altogether, that'd be $810 if my math skills serve me right. The dislikes on the video reveal the general sentiment, but as always, the real test of a product is never found in the online banter but in the sales numbers. Will people buy it? Will you buy it? I certainly won't. My PS5 serves for only Bloodborne, Demon's Souls Remake, and Stellar Blade. If I could get those three games without a PS5 console, either on PC directly or through emulation, I'd gladly sell off this hefty plastic beast on my desk. Oh, and to add a little insult to injury, Sony jacked up the price of its controllers by five bucks and raised the price of the base PS5 in Japan. Man, I'm old enough to remember when consoles got smaller and cheaper during their life cycle. Now they stay the same size and get more expensive. Times have not improved. I guess that's better than what most of the Western world's population is doing, getting progressively bigger and bigger and not in a good way. But hey, Sony's $75 DualSense controller is still cheaper than the $200 Razer Wolverine V3 Pro, which I purchased for myself. And here it is. No regrets. I regret nothing. The waifu of the week this time around is Lily from Stellar Blade. This tech-minded companion to Eve doesn't just bring the latest in combat equipment, she also brings the boys to the yard. Whatever that means. Give the video a like for Lily. A recent Baldur's Gate 3 patch opened up mod support and has resulted in over 1 million mods installed in less than 24 hours. PC gamers will continue to never disappoint us, but how many of those installations would you guess are some variation of nude mods? 10%? 25%? All of them? According to VG charts, fewer than 3% of PlayStation owners bought a PlayStation Portal. So, to the 2 point whatever percent that did buy it, I have but one question. Why? Martin Ware banned Heaven 17, that's the 17th number Heaven for those unable to get into the Superior First 16, formerly of 80s band Human League fame, says, F you to Rockstar Games over their lowball offer of only $7,500 a song for the use of his music. I guess you'll just have to go without his musical work in the next iteration of the hit game series that allows players to dive deep into the social and moral decay of urban society. New releases this week include Lollipop Chainsaw Repop, Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2, Edge of Sanity, and um, Demon School, whatever that is. Mountain West Wire asks, do video games enjoy the same worth and status as football and rugby? And my answer to that is no. Obviously, video games have far more worth and status than stupid sports ball. Psh, 
In oddball news, ex-user Tempernat announces that he just got his 10,000th PlayStation Platinum trophy, including a screenshot as proof. Damn, dude, I'm like 9,999 Platinums behind you. But I'm quickly catching up. DEI consultancy group Black Girl Gamers filed a false copyright claim on one of Smash JT's videos, only to, apparently, silently remove it several days later. This comes after he sent them an email promising legal action should they refuse to withdraw the bogus claim. This is the same group that was alleged to be employing illegal discriminatory practices in hiring. And who would imagine that a group called Black Girl Gamers would discriminate on the basis of race or sex or both at the same time? It seems to me that if you're hiring and your whole purpose is to represent only one race and one sex of that race, well, that's discriminatory. Gentlemen, got a humble gaming and workout setup in your basement? Why not let your wife replace it with a small imitation pub that you and your friends might use a few times a year? No need to enjoy hobbies or get in shape. Well done, Mrs. Wife. I'm sure your husband will love you for many years to come for taking away his hobbies and reducing his chances of getting jacked. Retroid is releasing two new portable retro handhelds, the RP5 and the RP5 Mini. We can assume the RP5 Mini is the smaller one. If you're into retro gaming and don't want to spend a lot of money, this might be a good way to get into the retro gaming scene on the go without spending as much as a Steam Deck. But me, I'd rather just have the Steam Deck. Game Rant thinks that now is the ideal time for Dark Souls 3's own Scholar of the First Sin style reworking of the game. And if by that he means making the original worse in every possible way like Tanimura did with Dark Souls 2, then no, I don't agree. But if instead he means to update the game a bit, maybe add some new content, then re-release, sure, why not? I really do feel like Dark Souls 3 was somewhat overlooked in a time of what I like to call Souls fatigue. I think a lot of us were just getting tired of the same old formula, and when Dark Souls 3 hit, we'd been through quite a lot of games like it, and so people just didn't give it the credit that it deserved. It is arguably the best of the Souls series. The video game advice of the week is talk to everyone. You never know what new quests, items, or info you might get. And the life advice for this week is the same. Talk to everyone. Just be ready to back away if they try to attack you. And for this week's gaming main, boom. Ha! <laughs> That was hilarious. And I'm giving this reaction not knowing at the time of this recording what meme I'm actually going to put up there. But I do know the one I put up there will be one I find funny. So it's not a lie that I'm saying it's hilarious because I know ahead of time I'll only pick one that I think is hilarious. And our content creator highlight this time around is Ryan Roger Athe of Reality Based. I included a link to his channel below, so go check it out. I was a guest of his not too long ago. Bloodborne's OST, Original soundtrack has long been on Spotify, but just recently the old Hunter DLC's OST dropped. Is this a portent of things to come? A remaster? A remake? We can only hope. Only to have our hopes dashed again and again, Sony. Developer of Soul Ash 2 refuses to bend the knee to the woke LGBTQIA plus mafia declining to add gay characters to his game about continuing one's legacy through procreation. I imagine that his objection might have something to do with the fact that gay couples cannot procreate, which is a key element of the game. Yeah, but they can adopt. <laughs> Lollipop Chainsaw Repop released to essentially zero censorship, although some of the physics are different, which I believe is due to a change in the game's engine. Which physics? Boob physics. Less bouncy, more realistic-y. Are you a boob guy or a butt guy? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you're a woman, which do you consider your stronger asset. Now, can you imagine talking about the reasons for Concord's failure while not once mentioning the ugly woke character designs? That's exactly what YouTube content creator The Act Man has done. Act Man? More like Act Ma'am. But seriously, folks, don't watch content creators who avoid talking about the elephant in the room. Whether they do it because they're woke or because they're afraid of the woke mafia, either way, they're misleading you, even lying to you. Don't watch bogus bigots or cowardly creators. If they won't call woke woke, help them go broke broke. Elden Ring's latest patch makes the DLC's notoriously difficult final boss easier. I guess now I got those I beat him pre-patch bragging rights, huh? Yeah. That's right. Pre-patch. Uh-huh. So what am I currently playing? 
I'm working my way through Astrobot on the PlayStation 5 a few stages at a time. Just finished up Iron Meat, released a video on it. Check it out, link in the description. I'm also playing a bit of Atlas Fallen just for the heck of it. And there's new content that they added. What are you currently playing? Old or new? Tell me in the comment section below. And you know, have you ever been like driving down the street and you happen to glance over, you see an empty building and you think to yourself, man, when did that place close? Yeah, that, that happens to me from time to time. And on that note, I'm gonna play you out with an awesome song, Tides by Home. Yeah, the artist goes by the name Home, which makes it actually really hard to find him. But whatever, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode and I look forward to seeing you here next week for the fourth episode of Real Gamers Weekly. If you have any suggestions, complaints, or comments in general, leave them below, I do read them all. Thank you again for watching and I will see you next time.